Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack, Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys. I think George likes you. But he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay. He did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but... All in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. I'm sure she's very proud of you. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes. Please, don't lie to us, okay? I won't. Don't worry. I won't.
Zack, is there something here that you want to check out? Well, I'll join you if you like, but we do need to get that report. Once you're finished, let's head back to the hotel. Zach, let's go over our progress. From what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim, Diane, was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zach? That's not it, Zack. Think back more carefully. What was different from the other crime scenes? That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was somewhere near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick was knocked out in the entrance. One other. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? That's right. Casey. We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. Casey's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Kaysen up in the basement. Now what did Kaysen hear when he was locked up? That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. We saw the rest. Zach, do you think that Nick is our serial killer? Me too. Asha sent in a report, too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket, which is in Carol's possession. The man with the tattooed back, and the upside-down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow.
Zach, what did you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Sleep, so I was drinking alone. My mother was a very kind woman. She always smiled so brightly. Baked cakes and cookies every day. She'd say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me. He was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and I remember he, he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up. And it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. Who's Zach? <laughs> Zach is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. Yeah. He's my only friend. What kind of person is he then? Well, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me when we discuss everything. When did you become friends? when I was a child. I was seven. I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes. So I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zach's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zach will get angry. That's a sad story, but I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Oh, oh yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? 
For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. There might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? Maybe <laughs> hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, if it comes to that, let it be a fair fight. Agreed? Find out everything there is to know about Diane. York, Nick is leaving the bar. Wait! She's still alive. Stop right there, Nick. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Diane Ames. Emily, hurry! You saved my life. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane.
open this door. There is no turning back. You still want to enter? I do. It's better than staying here. Very well. Off you go, Mr. Look carefully, boy. At times, we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Mr. Morgan, do you want a refill? Yes, thank you. Is the coffee that good, Mr. Morgan? Coffee is a vital investigative tool. I know exactly what to do now. Polly, I think I'm going to go see Harry today. Oh, really? He's a little strange, but I think he's the most trustworthy one around here. I think you'll have fun with him. If you say so, Polly, then we probably will. Of course! Now, give me your cup and I'll give you some more coffee. See you later, Polly. Mr. Morgan! What about the coffee? Don't you want a refill? Your coffee!
York. I can't find Thomas. Was he here? No, I haven't seen him. Have you tried the radio? I've been trying, but he's not answering. <sighs> what about Nick? No problem with him. He's calmed down a little. He's still saying he didn't do it. Nick said that Thomas disappeared sometime during the night. He kept calling for him, but Thomas stopped responding. I I'm a bit worried. George has asked for permission to search for Thomas. I understand that things have been hard for Thomas, but surely he's just resting at home. Uh, but I'm not against looking for him. Tell George that he has my blessing. Okay. As far as I know, Thomas always calls in when he needs a day off. We're human, and so we are limited. As far as you know, there haven't been any serial killings here before, right? That's right, but that's not... Emily, I'm going to see Harry today. What? Why? We have plenty of other leads to follow, don't we? He did invite me over, though. It would be bad manners not to accept. Are you really an FBI agent? I think the FBI would take a more logical approach to investigations. But Emily, serial killer does not stay within the boundaries of logic. Thus, you can't hope to capture such a killer using only logic. That's why I'm going to see Harry. You go with George and find Thomas. Okay, sounds like a plan. Great, thanks. Ugh, I was an idiot for thinking he might be a good pick. I really need to work on my taste in men. I thought about ordering in, but since we had leftovers, I made us lunch. Mm. What's with the face? I think my cooking turned out pretty good today. Okay, great. So crisis. What should I do, Zach? I might not be a wonder chef like Thomas, but I do practice every day. Well... Come on, tell it to me straight. Yes, what? I went into the sewer once during an investigation. Okay, just stop right there.
Hey, Nick. Happy that you've got your man? No, no. I'm not, I'm not your man. I'm just a suspect. Nick. I didn't do it. Actually, I believe you. But until we catch the real murderer, you're going to remain a prime suspect. What's going to happen to me, then? Never mind. I'm more worried about Olivia. How's she doing? Come on, say something. I can't tell you anything. If that's the case... Could... Could you hand her a letter? Please? Agent... You don't mind me inspecting it first? Oh, that's fine. Only this once, Nick. Thank you. Thanks. Tell her I'm sorry, will you? Nick, you need to do that, not me. Yo, dude. Hey, man. This map shows a station along the abandoned Extended Lines track. Now that was a busy place back when the lumber trade was big. No one goes near it now, you know. It's like a, a train graveyard. On top of that, some folks say they've even seen ghosts there. I don't mean one or two ghosts, man. I mean, like, hundreds. 
Every now and then, a golden opportunity comes along. Like a chance to leave home for a while and earn a lot of money. There were plenty of them at the end of the 80s. The lumber mill was severely short-handed, so they called in a lot of outside workers. But the place was failing, and indeed it died before most of the poor guys got there. So there was like a load of labor workers that had nowhere to go. No place to work, no way to get back to where they came from. A fair amount of them decided to live on the train they had rode in on. I guess that must have been hard living, living on a train car that ain't moving. What kept them in town? Ah, now, the head of the lumber mill had been lying to them. Wait just a little longer, we'll have work for you soon, you know, that kind of thing. He was just a lying scumbag. No way to rock, man. But lies, they only last so long. With each day that passed, those unemployed guys got more angry. But then, something happened. And the timing for it was incredible. The rail car they were spending the night in just happened to catch fire. With all them inside it. Incredible timing indeed. Oh yeah, but the police couldn't find any evidence to pin it on anyone. They didn't have all those gadgets and stuff you guys got now. And the police were annoyed the unemployed guys were causing trouble. Nothing happened to the head of the lumber mill. It made the news as an accident. Hmm. But the rumor says that a large number of those boys are still living in that train car. Unaware that they're dead. You better be careful, Mr. FBI, if you go down there by yourself. <laughs>
Zack, did you want to go somewhere before we visit Harry? That's fine by me. Nick asked me to give it to you. It's a letter. From him to you. Nick wrote this? For me? Olivia, I'm sorry for all the trouble I am causing you. I'm writing this letter because I need to tell you some things. First, I'm sorry about meeting with Diane without telling you. My actions were irresponsible and may have caused you to misunderstand. But I swear to God I was not cheating on you. And I didn't kill Diane. That's what I wanted to tell you. As I sit here in this cell, all I can think about is you. Don't worry about keeping the diner open, okay? And try to eat well, too. I had thought that this happiness we had would just go on forever. I've always been grateful to you. But I've never told you, have I? I used to think that putting it into words made it sound cheap. But at times like these, words are all we need. Thank you for everything. Once I get home, I'll make it up to you. Take care of yourself. I love you. Nick. Nick. <sighs> Um, Agent, could you wait a moment, please? I want to write a reply. Sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Zack, I hope Nick will feel better by this.
a letter from Olivia. From Olivia? What the? I wrote so much. More than I'd, I'd ever actually say. A lot more than this. And she writes me only three lines back. Not enough for you? Oh, no. No, it's, it's more than enough. She wrote as much as she could. That's the best she could do right now. Yeah. Three powerful lines. I believe in you. I'll wait for you. I'm sorry. I, I don't agree with the last one, though. I'm the one who has to apologize. Do you feel a little better now, then? Just wait until the case is finished. I promise this will all come to an end. Yeah. I, I know. I, I believe you. She's believing in me, too. And waiting for me. Well, I have to be going. Now, hold, hold on a minute. What's this? The key to the back door of the diner. There's a big bag in the kitchen. I don't know if you could use it, but consider it yours. You'll have to help yourself to it, of course. I, I can't exactly go with you. Okay. I'll take this and I'll go check it out. Looks like a return to better things for those two, eh, Zach? Nick was like, if you could use it. But, Zack, this is great. We'll be able to carry more items now, Zack.
victims that die if I live in the gallery and then being a wasted attempt to save a life. It's a real mess. Dive. When's the last time I made a dive like that? Oh, I remember. Do you? It was in my late teens. We used to go to those concerts. You and I like punk rock, but we like different types of punk. You like hard and heavy punk. You like Crash and Sham 69. I like the more twisted ones. Like the damn Buzzcocks, Sneaky Pop, Joy Division. We used to talk for hours about the bands we really liked. But for some reason, neither of us listened to the Sex Pistol I wonder why that was. It seems strange thinking about it now.
as a punk rocker and surfing bird, and I was so depressed when I heard the news of the deaths. Original punk is one of the greatest gifts left from the 20th century. Let's hope they're still rocking on wherever they are.
Hey, Sigourney. I'm glad you're here. My pot, it's getting cold. Please, let's get going. Okay, but just give me a minute. When do you think I'll be friendly enough with the pot? This is the last time. So go, hurry! What'll you do if my pot goes cold? Did you hear that, Zack? This is the last time. The mystery of the pot shall soon be answered. Now, get the car going! My house is over by the lake. Three, two, one, go! To you, my pot is still warm. We made it somehow. Do you think the pot will open up to me a little? Ask the pot yourself. I will. Hey there. Will you tell me what you have inside? Well, did you hear it? I did. What did the pot say? I heard it say, take my lid off. Are you sure? Of course. This conversation is between you and the pot, after all. Go ahead. Oh, you're reminding me of my graduation. 
<sighs> Sigourney. Huh? I'm not going to open it. Mysteries are intriguing because of the mystery. I want to keep this one an eternal mystery. Are you sure? Yes. I've made up my mind. Then you have truly come to the truth. I knew you were a fine student. But you must never tell anyone else what you have learned here today. Zach, let's get back to the hotel. First Anna, then Becky, now Diane. I'm not looking forward to writing this investigation report. Agent Morgan. York. Do you have a moment? What is it, George? Zach, what do you think? George, sorry.
exact is there something here that you want to check out? Well, uh,
How's Nick doing? Well, he keeps saying that he didn't do it. I see. Do you think he... You know... Diane? The evidence at the scene would suggest so. But this third party who knocked him out makes things more complicated. What's the matter? What is this? This tastes different. Really? Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. I've got the mustard and peanut butter mixed up. Thomas, you having a bad day? That's not like you. You've been working just as hard as us recently. You must be tired. Not really. Please, I'll make these over. What? Why? It doesn't taste bad. In fact, it tastes pretty good to me. Hey, Emily. Something smells good. Really? I'm trying to make a meatloaf this time. A meatloaf, huh? Nice. That's a basic dish for every household. Yep, my mother cooked it pretty often, too. Would you like to give it a taste? Uh, again? Uh, well, I can... Don't worry. I've done the poison testing already, and I made something pretty tasty last time, didn't I? Emily, maybe we should do this another time. Mm. So, mm. how's it taste? Mm. Emily, I have to admit this one is hard to comment on. One can insert it into their mouth, that much is certain. But I'm not sure if the human digestive system can handle this and digest it. 
Oh, come now, Emily, no need to get depressed. It's just like last time. We just need to identify the missing ingredient, and that might turn today's cooking into a tasty dish. So, what is it this time? I'm thinking a vegetable. One that becomes sweeter when heated. A sweet vegetable? I have no idea. Then Zach and I will bring it to you like last time. Okay, I'll keep trying by myself, too. Emily, the answer is onion. Onion? The meatloaf is finished. And it tastes good, too. It really is good, isn't it? Probably good enough to sell. Emily, this certainly tastes good. But if I were you, I wouldn't quit my job to become a cook just yet. It'll be a tough career move. You think so? I'd like to get other people's opinions, too. I can't recommend that. I'm trying to be polite about this, you know. Then you should stick to being polite until we finish eating. I can't believe you're the only person I have to eat this fine meal with. Zach, we search for ingredients for her, and we help her with her cooking. We even went as far as to praise the taste. And yet she still gets angry. Are all women this way? Do they all just snap like this? Either way, I can't figure her out. Agent York... I'm sorry if I got a little emotional on you, but I'm glad I was able to make a good meal today. I know this isn't much, but please, I, I want you to have it. Zach, let's go. However, there was a... That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was someone near the scene. There are two possible... Zach, who was... That's right. Hasten. We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. Kaysen's statement came out as follows. He and... That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, Zach... Me too. Usha sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirmed...
can I ask? I was seven. Zach. Previously during the investigation.
so, Zach? About Emily. My first impression when we met her on that bridge is slightly different from what I think about her now. Don't you think she's pretty mesmerizing? And Zach, she seemed interested in you. Did you make a move on her? No, don't answer. I'm just asking. But if you like her, I won't stand in your way. But I'd like to hear the truth. Because this kind of stuff could affect our friendship, you know. Me? I'm just interested in her, that's all. She doesn't love or anything. From what I can tell, she doesn't even seem to like me. It's pretty clear from how she acts when she's around me. As you know, Zach, I'm cautious with women. It's because I was badly burned in my last relationship. I really have no idea what women are thinking. That's my problem. You're pretty friendly with the ladies, aren't you, Zach? Maybe you should teach me about how to interact with women. Zach, did you want to go somewhere before we visit Harry? That's fine by me.
Even Emily could be targeted next. We can't rule that out. All the more reason to catch the Raincoat Killer ASAP. And that means working closely together. We can work out the Emily situation later. Don't get me wrong, Zack. I mean, I'm not interested in Emily because she's female or anything. I'm just saying she's interesting. You know, as an in interesting person. But by looking at her, she reminds me of something I used to feel. That's all. Like back when I first met you. You know, that feeling we all used to feel back when we were kids. Feeling safe while also feeling a need to protect. That kind of feeling. But Zach, who made me feel that back then? Anyways, we're getting closer one step at a time to cracking this case. I have a feeling it's going to get tough.
miss anything, just stop me. Did you want to go somewhere before we visit Harry? That's fine by me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 